This morning, quickly, the Lord has led us to share on how to actualize our goals. And if you've been following our midweek services, we've been talking about goals, setting goals, and um, all about that on Wednesday, two weeks ago, we talked about setting goals. Yes, this last Wednesday, about goal setting, life skills, goal setting, then last Friday, how to set the goals. This morning, now you've known about goal setting, you've known you know, how to set the goals. Now, how do you actualize the goals? Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning, Lord, for the time that we have. Holy Spirit, come guide and lead us by your Spirit in the name of Jesus. Lord, help us. Direct us. Let your word save souls. Set captives free. Heal the sick. Deliver the oppressed. Let your word transform us in the name of Jesus. Let your word take us from glory to glory. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Once again, welcome our online viewers. And I want to encourage every one of us, if you are not yet subscribe to the YouTube channel. Please do that so that, you, so that you don't miss out. Like yesterday, the Royal Daughters Conference was on. I don't know how many of you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. So please go back and if you subscribe, you can easily know, even though you've forgotten, you can easily get to know what is happening. We had an awesome time. Psalm 127, verse 1 to 2. Psalm 127, verses 1 to 2. Unless the Lord builds the house, the labor in vain will build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he gives his beloved sleep. Hallelujah. We're talking about how to actualize our goals. We've known what our goals. We've known how to set the goals. Now, how do we actualize our dreams, what you want to become, that, that great man, that great woman that you want to become? How do you get there? The Passion Translation of that scripture, Psalm 127, verse 1 and 2, it says, if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will circle it in vain. It really is senseless to walk so hard from early morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Hallelujah. I love that aspect. God can provide for you even when you are sleeping. You can be making money. Amen. Hallelujah. Even when, if you plan, if you set goals for yourself, you can be making a living. You can be making money while even you are sleeping. If you set goals, if you plan very, very well, somebody shout hallelujah. I love that kind of life. Last week, we, you know, we spoke on the law of, you know, law of attraction. We said that, I mean, that, that you will attract into your life whatever you focus on. We dwelt on that. We used the story of the prodigal son, if you can remember. So now, what is the goal? Quickly, just remind us that have not been following our midweek services. A goal is an idea of the future or desired result that a person or a group of people they envision in life or they plan and commit to achieve. Hallelujah. I remember when we started as, as a couple, we got married April 16, 2005. By July, August, we left for the U.S., Miami, Florida. And uh, I was going, finishing PhD year, going to study law, had a scholarship, LLM law. And uh, we just immediately, four months, then I've just dropped, I didn't even complete my PhD, I just dropped my thesis and flew the next day. 
I flew back from the U.S. for my Viva. Passed then, graduated the next week, and went back the next day. So we were, we were just in the first few years, just wanted to enjoy ourselves. Amen? We just wanted to enjoy ourselves. We planned life that way, that we don't need children then. Amen? We set our life like that. Of course, I was going for another study, so at least I need another one year after one year before we can think of, you know, children coming in. We set our life like that. Amen. Talking about goal setting. Planning your life, your desired future. The story goes forth to say, as we are there in the church, serving from, from the airport, we are right into the church. Amen. From the airport, the church van in Miami was there to pick us from the, from the, from the airport. The pastor sent the church van to come and pick us from the airport. From the airport, our professor was there. So we had two vehicles waiting, the church van and the professor with his jeep. We, we ended up going with the professor, you know, because he knew the city sort of. And we started life, started life straight in the church. So we just sold out to the, to the career, my law program, and the church. So we weren't thinking of children. But right there, we saw, you know, as life will be, people, ladies, the elderly ladies will come once in a while. They will come and tap at the you know, Pastor Andrew's stomach. You know, they will come and just say this to man, give us our children. <laughs> Amen. And I look at them, say, leave my wife alone. Amen. You know, they will just come. It's, part, it's more of a thing of culture. Amen. Thank God for their desire for us too. But we are just looking at them and say, but... We just want to enjoy our life for now. No, give us some time. Hallelujah. Amen. Just to, that's just about one aspect of setting goals. Amen. Second Chronicles 15 verse 7. But you be strong and do not let your hands be weak. For your work shall be rewarded. Amen. If you set goals and you go after them, we are reminded, be strong and do not let your hand be weak. Don't get easily tired for whatever you set for yourself. For your work shall be rewarded and you will testify in the mighty name of Jesus. What do we want to know quickly about goal setting? Begin with the end in mind. What, do you, what are you expecting? What are you expecting? You are a student studying. The end in mind is your certificate, your degree. Amen. You have a relationship. The end in mind as a believer should be the wedding, the marriage. Hallelujah. You are starting a career. The end in mind is that you want to make the best of that career. Begin with the end in, the, in mind. Think of that a year from now, you may wish, you know, you are... Started today, whatever you desire, think that, you know, don't just leave it. Because if you leave it in vacuum, if you don't set the goal, you always regret that why didn't that start when the idea came? Start once the idea comes in, start immediately. A goal without a plan is just a dream. You are only dreaming. Don't keep dreaming. Setting goals is the first step in turning the invisible into the visible. Set goals. When you set the goal, I was sharing on Friday, that whatever you see us doing, I've, I know as a pastor, January to June, I've put everything in paper. I know what I'm going to do every Sunday. Amen? I know everything that I'm, we are doing as a church, I've written everything every day. Done. I know I've planned everything down, submitted to my board of trustees. This is what I'm doing. So I don't just do things in a vacuum. You can want to desire something, but I've set for myself what I want to do. And that should be for every, before the year started. So I am not easily moved by emotions. Amen? And that should apply to every individual. And I kept telling us before the you no, know, right before the crossover. That set, plan your life before the year starts. Once the year starts, 
you are in need. No country, no military, no go for early money, you no know, jogging when the war started. The military man, they, they always they keep the routine. Whether there is war, there's no war. They are always active. Am I right? So once there's war, you may not know they just might pick you at 4 a.m. <laughs> They've sent you to somewhere else. And that may be for the next one year. So get yourself in order. If you have to start now, then I will say it's already too late. If you are starting to plan your life for 2021, it is already too late. You've missed January. You've missed February. It will take you a lot to cash up. Because others have gone ahead of you. Those that have planned their life, they've gone ahead of you. Someone said, ah, you are doing so much. You are doing so much. You are doing, what? We, we, I still have about eight moons. Is it eight moons or ten moons? <laughs> ten moons. After March, we have nine months left for the year. We just done just about a quarter of the year. So there's still so much to do. Somebody shout hallelujah. And quickly, one way to, one way to set goals is the smart principle. For those in business management and leadership, you know the smart principle. Be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. You can set goals in your career, Finances, education, family, attitude, physical, your physical strength. Take some time to walk always. Thank God for the taxis. Amen. For the young men and women. All of us, go out. Take work. So set your life in order. Now, where I'm going to is the key principles of how to actualize our goals. And we will do that quickly. I was guided to these three things this morning. Number one, demonstrate radical obedience. Demonstrate what? Radical obedience. Radical obedience. John 2, 5. Jesus at the wedding, king of Galilee. They needed wine. The mother told the people, go and meet Jesus, my son. And look at what he said. His mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. Amen. So in setting your goals, once you've set them as you've known on Friday night, then go for it. You want to have a degree? Go for it. Obey every instruction given to you. It will be foolish, for instance, Dr. Shade, who wants to be a medical doctor, to be taught by professors and not obey the professors. And you still want to be a medical doctor. <laughs> Amen. No. You must obey your instructors. For those that are in, into football, I love football. Even though I'm not playing. <laughs> Amen. But one thing I know is that you must obey the coach. If you want to excel in that career, you must demonstrate radical obedience. I know of a great footballer that I know very well from my part of the world, you know, my country of origin, I remember one coach saying that this young man was so good, they called him J.J. Okosha, you know, he was known here to Bolton and other clubs around here. And they said, the young man, the, his coach said, no, I love this young man, but I can't make the best use of him. That was when, he had a, when the, the country had a coach called the Clems, you know, one Western of. He said, this man is good, but I don't, this young boy, is, but I don't want to fish on him because he doesn't, you know, it doesn't, it, does, it doesn't fit into my plans. It dribbles too much. I need the one that we, once you have the ball, go to the post, go to the goal. And for the, for the time of that man, even though he was good, he wasn't given the best of, you know, place, best of time to future. Because the coach said, Yes, it's good, but it doesn't fit into my plan. You must obey my instructions. And that's why the team were top there. Every, every, as the, from the middle field to the top player, to the, to the top strikers, and to the goal. That was his plan. You must demonstrate what? Radical obedience. Number two, quickly, focus. To actualize, and that coach is still the number one coach in that country. 
because he had a plan. Number two, quickly. Focus, focus, focus. Philippians 3, 14. Paul said, I press towards the mark. He had a goal. He had a goal. He had a goal. I press towards the goal. The price of the mark. I call it. He said, I'm going somewhere. I know where I am going. It was very, very specific. He knows where he was going. My prayer is that you will have a goal in mind. In the name of Jesus. A goal, they say, is, you know, is a plan, is a dream with a timeline. You must, there, there's a time, there's a timeline up, attached to a goal. So you must be focused. You must be focused. And I enjoy that aspect of life because if you are not focused, you can easily be distracted. You can easily be distracted. Okay, for those that are new, I will share this story. I was in the university, self-financing my PhD, self-financing my PhD. And there I was working to pay my international fees. The church was just starting, starting the church here in the city. And I'm so, I've, and I've, you know, my, my finances, the church, and the work life. I'm a student. In the midst of all that, so if I'm working, I'm working. When I, when I'm, when I finished work, Straight maybe to the house, sleeping, or straight to the library to get my PhD going. I remember sitting day in the library. I was I had two, three hours to get what I'm to do and to go to maybe to the room to sleep. Then I had a young lady come into the library where I was sitting down. She was by the bookshelves, just disturbing the entire place. Pick the book, let allow the book to fall, make noise. And here I am just studying, and I, I look at, the, she was making a lot of noise, and I didn't get distracted. I went home, went to my hostels. One or two days thereafter, I was just going to my friend's room, my, my next room, a colleague in the university, the next room in my, on my floor. And I saw this young girl, and she's now, she's now a pastor's wife now, a, f- a very good friend. I saw her in in my colleague's room. And immediately she saw me in the room, she went and she locked the door. And she said, thank God, now at last I can get your attention. Amen. I said, sister, what's happening? You know? She said, no, I came to the library, they've said so much about you, you know, and I came, I, I, I noticed that you were in the library that day, I you know I came around, but you never gave me any attention. I disturbed all, all the books around you so that you can say something that I can engage you in what I wanted you to tell me. And you never look at my way. And what am I trying to say? Be focused. Don't be distracted. And all that she wanted, I said, okay, ask, what do you want from me? Just tell me how you are coping. I'm doing the master's program. You are doing a the PhD. They said you are self-financing your PhD. I'm even tired doing my master's. Just tell me how you are surviving. That was all that she wanted. Hallelujah. Be focused, just like Paul, Philippians 3, 14. Now, finally, there, you need wisdom. Proverbs 4, 7 says, wisdom is the principal thing. Get wisdom in all that getting, get understanding. You need wisdom to survive. I've always, I've, I've been telling people, you've seen people that have known, that have gone through what you are bad going into. Why not draw knowledge from that? Amen. For those of you in the house, I've, for most of you, I've told you people, there's a language you know, we, we are used to. Ah, follow those that have known the way. Follow those that know the way. That's the better way to put it. Amen. There are some things that you are paying money for that you don't need to pay money for. Hallelujah. If only you can ask the relevant questions. There are some things that you are laboring all night, three, four shifts a day. You can't even serve your God. Amen? If only you can ask what? The relevant questions. You can seek for knowledge. Wisdom, they said, is what? The correct application of knowledge. So wisdom comes by knowledge. Knowledge comes by information. Information is, I don't know this thing. Now, tell me about this. Once I've been told, then I've known. That is knowledge. 
Then when I've known, then I apply it. Then that is wisdom. Then when you have applied wisdom, then I've got understanding. Like I will tell some of you, we are now landlords in the city. 20 years in the city. You are a landlord, isn't it? Amen. So there are certain things that you are going about whereby you can easily get your way through by just asking what? The relevant question. And before you know it, you are on your way to actualizing your goals. You are a medical doctor to be. We have medical doctors in the house. Ask the relevant questions and they will guide you on how to go about it. Simple. And the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Time will not permit us, but we have to just know that goal setting is key. But you must know how to actualize these goals. Three quick things that you have to know in addition to what we've said is that you must have courage and endurance. It may not all be rosy. Amen? You must be courageous. Life is a journey. In a journey, the experiences are yours. Somebody's experience may not be the same as yours. Am I right? 2 Timothy 2.3 says so. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You must endure. Don't just easily give up. You've set a goal, then go for it. You may have some roadblocks, obstacles, mountains, but endure. Hallelujah. And you will endure in Jesus' name. I've read about uh, Jim Collins, you know, from good to great. For those in management, you will know that. Why some companies make the leap and others don't. And they said the difference between the good and the great is the 5%. The one that can take the extra, like the five wise virgins and the five foolish. Are you ready to do the extra, to endure, to achieve your goal? You will, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And you will not easily give up. In the mighty name of Jesus. Number two, quickly, and two and three, then I'm done. There's, this is what this man said, Ari Shuma said. He said, you can accomplish anything in life, provided that you do not mind who gets the credit. When I read about that quote, I was touched. You can accomplish anything in life provided that you don't mind who gets the credit. And that's where most of us fail. Most of us, many human beings, we want to get the credits. If you don't mind who gets the credit, you can accomplish anything in life. If you don't mind who gets the credits, you can what? accomplish anything you desire in life. So in certain goals, if you don't mind, who should have the credit? No, if you are humble enough, if you are humble enough to give the credit to someone else, to the team, then I was asking my, you no, know, when, I, when I was studying, I came down from my study room and asked my family, so what word can you give to that? Or instance, as someone said in the family said, it's the case of Beyonce. Beyonce. Is it Beyonce the caller? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Beyonce. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. And they said, no, I was, I won't, they, they were telling me in the house. That's really a good example. They said, they said, Beyonce got a Grammy Award recently. All right. And it was at 28 Grammy in that particular field. All right. I don't know where I'm going there, but that's, this is what I asked them. They told me, they gave me that example. And that when she was having the award, she gave the credit to her daughter for having her first Grammy. Even though the daughter just played a little part in the making of the video of the song, but she gave the credit to someone else. Hallelujah. And meanwhile, she's the greatest, the world. She, she had the highest number of awards in that particular field. The point is, you can achieve anything in life if you are able, willing to give the credit to others. Finally, this morning, finally, you say, Pastor, Beyonce, it is well. You can see that I'm not used to the name. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. 
Amen. But she was part of the song that says, uh, was it when Jesus said yes, is it? We saw her dancing there. Amen. You are laughing now. All right. So there's, they are all from, uh, we are bringing them, all of them back. Amen. They will all come back to Jesus. Finally, finally, finally. There are going to be times when you can't wait for somebody. Finally. There are going to be times when you can't, if you set your goal for you to actualize your goals, there will be times when you can't wait for somebody. Somebody can draw you back, can delay you. So when you've set your goal, there will be a time that you can't wait for anybody. There are times that I don't wait for my family. Amen. Pastor Andrew knows there are times that I cannot. Once we are having, okay, even my ministers know. <laughs> Come to the church now. I'm done now. We have to have the Christmas, uh, this thing. We've agreed. We've, our first Christmas African BIM, uh, or the BIM community, that project we're doing. We had the BIM community and the LYN, the community project. We've agreed. But somehow I found out that all can be done before Christmas. Am I right? You agree? All can be done. We can do the one for the community, you know, the, you know on the 20th of, of December. Then we can have the one for the, for the BIM community food, on Christmas Day. So finally, I just changed my mind. No, this can be done. We don't need to wait till the end of the year. We don't need to wait. And I started asking them, please, can we have volunteers? We want to pack the things. I remember one or two encouraging people, please, pastor wants to do this thing now. Please, be available. Let's get this thing done. And I see that, and my wife said, so many people were saying that, oh, we've agreed on that and that. I said, no, 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 no. We can get this thing done before that day. And before we know it, it was done. Hallelujah. There are times for you to actualize your goals. There are times that you cannot wait for anybody. Am I talking now? Amen. There are times that as an individual, you set a goal for yourself. Don't wait for somebody else to be ready before you do it. As long as you are ready, you are strong, go for it. Go until you are unable to continue. And by that time, the goal has already been done. Actualized. Let's rise up. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Every goal we've set for ourselves this year, no, we will actualize it. In the name of Jesus, we will not wait for somebody to be ready first. Hallelujah. Why not just thank God this morning? Go ahead. Our time is done. Go ahead and just bless the name of Jesus. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him all the honor. Give him all the adoration. Give him all the worship. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. We give you praise. Thank you because we, with you on our side, all things are possible. In the name of Jesus. That this year, we will really make impact. Every goal we've set for ourselves, we will actualize it. By your grace, in the name of Jesus, with you on our side, we can get there. Yes, not by might, not by power, but by your spirit, says the Lord. Therefore, who art thou, Jerubabel? No, you shall become mountains. Before Jerubabel, you, can, you shall become a plain. Zechariah 4, 6, hallelujah. Every mountain, every obstacle is giving way in the mighty name of Jesus. So this morning, I speak to someone. That that goal you've set for yourself, don't wait any longer. Don't wait for any other day. Begin it right now and the Lord will see you through. The Lord will encourage you by his spirit in the name of Jesus. And I see you finishing very strong. And I see you finishing very well in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. In Jesus mighty name we are prayed. Now you are watching this morning, you are wondering, how do I even start? I've got so much of goals for myself. I don't even know how to start. The first place is to come into Jesus. Commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust in him and he will bring it to pass. Psalm 37 verse 5. The first place is for you to come to Jesus. Why not pray this prayer with me? Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Accept me as your son, as your daughter. Wash my sins away with your precious blood. Write my name in the book of life. Give me the grace to walk with you. I 
from this day henceforth, Lord, do not allow me to go the other way. Guide me by your spirit. Is that your prayer? You are now a child of God. Why not just identify with the way of and we pray together and yeah, if you are online, cannot just connect with us, write us or in our different platforms and we shall work with you. So Father, we thank you. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen.